All right, folks, right around 325 on this Monday, April the 15th, it is tax day. Uh, William Cole here in the Storm Studio. We want to do a weather model discussion with you today. Um, we're trying to get back into doing these kind of daily, right, Monday through Friday, um, maybe a little abbreviated today, only for the fact we do have an opportunity of some severe weather around the area. I think it's going to be pretty limited in North Texas. Our far western counties have at least the better chance, if you will, of maybe seeing some severe weather out in that direction. In fact, there is already a tornado watch in effect for two of our counties. We'll talk about that. And then again, also kind of give you the behind the scenes look at, uh, again, how we're putting together the forecast of the day. Um, so let's go and dive into this. And again, by the way, if you haven't seen one of these before, we don't put this on our channel. Again, this is strictly uh, just kind of showing you the behind the scenes maps. And again, kind of giving you the raw aspect of the forecast of the day. Uh, again, if you're watching this on our social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, feel free to give it a like below. And again, if you do have a comment, question, anything like that, feel free to leave it uh, there below as well. Uh, but this is where I want to start. Um, again, just looking at downtown Dallas. And again, this is from Reunion Tower. Obviously, it's been a cloudy day out there. This has worked in our favor because we have a pretty strong cap above the surface, which is a warm layer of air, right? And so if you have an updraft, right, if you're trying to get a thunderstorm to go, you have an updraft and it hits that warm layer of air and it can't necessarily penetrate it, right? And so in order for you to get a stronger updraft, right, a convective motion, you need warmer temperatures, right? So today, with the clouds in place, even though it's mild, right, we've got temperatures mid upper 70s to maybe right around 80, uh, we're not close enough to that true convective temperature to really allow us to break through that cap, right? So even though the cap will weaken some heading into the evening and we'll have scattered showers and thunderstorms around, um, you know, a real potent April day, at least locally here at the Metroplex, is not necessarily going to unfold. But again, out to the west, out in the big country, even some of our western counties, um, again, we'll be a little bit dicier later this afternoon. In fact, let's go look at temperatures, and then we'll kind of get on with it. Uh, let's go and take a look at these here. And again, forgive me, we've just obviously got this kind of in manual mode here. Um, so 70s mainly around the area, right? So DFW 76 officially so far. My forecast, the high was 80. Again, it might take a couple peaks of sun to get there. Uh, but again, we'll definitely be in the mid to upper 70s. For daytime highs, right? But again, still not, you know, soaring with the temperatures in order to really uh, jump us up closer to that uh, convective level. Just a quick peek at radar. Again, we've had a few very weak scattered showers around the area. A lot of this has not even necessarily been reaching the ground, but a few sprinkles here or there. Out in Wise County, there might be a little shower currently that is reaching the ground, but notice the green counties out to the west. That is a tornado watch. And again, for Young County and for Stevens County, in our coverage area, that is in effect until 9 p.m. The rest of the tornado watch is in effect for the big country, even down towards the Permian Basin. And again, whatever forms out there will eventually push east as we go through the evening, more than likely in a weakening phase. But again, there's going to be an opportunity that some of that activity does try and uh, work its way in. Um, okay, with that being said, let's do this. Let's go and jump over. Uh, to this, and I need to do one thing, and I apologize here. But let me do this. We just jumped on to do one of these, and of course, whenever it's Monday and we're back here, it seems like nothing is set up the same way it was on Friday. And all I'm doing is we just have a browser open over here, and I'm just selecting this browser so we can actually show it through the weather computer. There we go. And this isn't where I want to start. I want to start here uh, with the overall setup, right? The 500 millibar chart mid-levels of the atmosphere. This is where we get the overall pattern of what's going on. And, you know, we say this every time we do one of these, we're looking for dips, storm troughs, typically cooler weather, typically active weather associated with that. Or we're looking for ridges. It kind of looks like a bump, right, in the jet stream flow. And that typically is quieter weather and a lot of times milder weather. Well, if you look just off to our west, what do you see? Number one, you see a big dip. You also see a donut hole. That's an area of low pressure at the mid-level. So we've got a big, deep storm trough, pretty potent upper-level storm trough coming out. But the key piece of this for us here in North Texas, 
The main storm is going well to our north. It's going up into parts of Kansas and Nebraska. We so happen to have a dry line extending down into our area. And with a little bit of lift coming off of this storm system, it's aiding the dry line to maybe bubble up a few thunderstorms again later today. Um, but again, with the strong cap, without a lot of upper level dynamic, the main dynamics well to the north, um, simply put, this is just not going to be a true severe weather day for us, even though we could have a little bit of severe weather, again, if that makes sense. I want to do this as well. Um, let's see if we can just zoom this in, okay, to the southern plains. And I want to look at available energy here, and this is what we call CAPE. And you can see exactly where the dry line is. See how we have all this available energy. We have moisture, we have heat, things are bubbling. And then you basically get to West Texas or the Texas Panhandle and it goes to white and there's nothing there, right? So behind it, the dry air is stable. There's no humidity, there's no instability. So you can kind of at least get an idea of where the dry line is. And again, just for example, as we're looking at some of the instability here, um, you know, especially out to the west, we've got some instability around 2,500 joules is what we call it. Um, locally here, closer to the Metroplex, about 1,500. So, I mean, we're, you know, we're relatively unstable. For us, that's not an extremely unstable day, um, but there is some instability there. Okay, but on the back side of it, like I mentioned, above the surface, we've got this, I mean, just absolutely extremely strong cap. Some of the little blue numbers there, I know they're hard to see, those are our what we call sin numbers or the inhibition numbers, right? And the stronger those are, again, unfortunately, the stronger the cap is going to be. And again, the cap's definitely weaker, again, out across parts of the big country. Again, more than likely, uh, we'll see storms form out there. Right now, here locally, we just have an unbreakable cap. I mean, the numbers are just at that level. It's unbreakable, quote unquote. But again, those numbers will come down. Those sin numbers will come down some as we head into the evening. And again, we'll try and bring this activity in from the West. But right now, I mean, it's really looking pretty limited. I mean, we're really going to have to weaken that cap down uh, to truly get anything in uh, locally here whatsoever. I want to see if we can also just take a look at the dew point numbers here. And this is, by the way, uh, the Storm Prediction Center mesoanalysis page. Uh, again, if any weather weenies out there, storm trackers, anything like that, this is a great, again, like near term happening now. You can even stair step it out for a few hours um, way again to analyze the atmosphere, right? As you go through spring, we use it year round. Uh, but again, for storm trackers, again, severe weather enthusiasts, whatever, this is probably, again, this isn't model data. This is different. But again, it's a great tool to use. I'm always surprised at how many people don't know about the SPC uh, meso analysis page. And again, I was really trying to just kind of give you a better view of the dry line, but there's not really a product on here uh, that's really going to do that. Um, so with that being said, what I want to do is I want to come over to the Storm Prediction Center Outlook. And like I said, this is going to be a little abbreviated and choppy today. We're just going to kind of go through this. And like I mentioned, we got to get on with it. Uh, but I did want to at least talk about uh, the opportunity of severe weather today. Storm Prediction Center has got a slight risk down into the big country. A uh, slight risk comes right up to the Metroplex. The rest of North Texas, it's a marginal risk. And if we look at the probabilities, there is a 5% zone um, down into the big country for tornadoes. You hear 5% and you think, oh my gosh, that's nothing. But keep in mind, a 10%, a 15% day, those are kind of bigger days, right? The tornado probabilities are always low. But again, some of the low medium numbers in, rea in reality are higher, okay? So 5% basically signifies isolated tornadoes could be possible, but it's, let me put it this way, a 5% probability is good enough for the Storm Prediction Center to issue that tornado watch, okay, if that puts it into context, okay? You're never gonna see like an 80 or 90% tornado day, okay? So, you know, you get start getting to five to 10, really anything above 10, never locks in tornado probabilities, but again, you become a little more concerned about those, right? Uh, the other concern, you know, looking well off to the north wind, you know, if you look up across parts of Kansas and Nebraska, not really our concern here. We do have a hatch black area of hail. And again, that would mainly be from any supercells developing out across parts of the big country. Supercells, notorious hailers, as we know here in the Metroplex. So that could be a concern, again, out to the west, maybe a little bit more in the way of organized 
large hail up across parts of the central plains. Okay. From there, again, tomorrow, same system pushes off to the east, basically out of our hair. We're no longer worried about it. And then as we get into Wednesday, similar story, slow mover over through parts of the Midwest. I'm going to keep clicking this because uh -oh, we get to day four. Well, you're beginning to see something show back up. I, if I was drawing this up from the Storm Prediction Center, keep in mind, once you get further out, like, for example, this is day four, they're not really updating these every three to six hours. This is like a once-a-day deal. Again, looking at four days, they typically do these here actually overnight. Um, the latest data continues to show uh, this would be this upcoming Thursday, the opportunity of rain and storms, maybe even a line of storms, uh, a little bit further to the south. So more than likely when they update that, even though for them that's kind of a well-extended range forecast, the area of yellow is probably going to come again a little bit further to the south, more than likely into the Metroplex, deeper into North Texas. I think Thursday is going to be our next opportunity of severe weather. Could be maybe even on Friday an isolated severe storm or two. And then, believe it or not, we turn sharply cooler by this upcoming Saturday. In fact, the entire weekend looks cooler, but we may be talking about a cooler rain and heavy rain as we get into Saturday, okay? So again, outside of that, basically, that's our only other risk of severe weather. We're talking about today, we're talking about Thursday, maybe an isolated storm on Friday, and then even though we have more rain chances on Saturday, again, simply put, it's all just rain. Okay, let me do this. I want to walk you through the modeling very quickly, and then we'll go ahead and wrap this up, right? So similar product to what we were looking at earlier, and I want to use the zoomed-in view here. Um, again, this is our 500 millibar chart. This is kind of the meat and potatoes of when we put a forecast together, right? What we're looking for uh, gives us the overall pattern. Again, we're looking for the dips, right, the troughs or the ridges. This is also highlighting areas of spin or vorticity. That's what the colors are. So I'm just going to walk you through this. Again, you can see that storm coming out from the west. That's today's storm. We're dealing with it essentially right now and tonight. So that's in and out relatively quickly. And then again, we continue to watch out to the west, right? Our next upper level storm uh, that's going to be coming in. You can just kind of see that longer, uh, longer wave troughing pattern to the north developing, but then also look across parts of the desert southwest. It's kind of that subtropical flow coming in with little areas of disturbed weather uh, with it as well. And again, it's one of the reasons why, again, we're going to have that opportunity of, again, number one, rain coming in and even an opportunity of storms on Thursday. But then as that big, deep trough digs down, if you're able to kind of see that, see how that's coming out of Kansas through Missouri, see how that trough is digging down, that's going to be cooler weather. We're just going to get the back side of it. But truly for this time of year, that's going to be some cooler weather. In fact, let's go and switch over to our 850 millibar chart. And this will be for air mass movement. And we'll look at that trough again as we go forward in time. So again, today we're mild. We know about that, right? Even over the next several days, we're going to be very mild. In fact, by, really by Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to be talking about temperatures near 90 um, locally, even here in the Metroplex. But then take a look at that big bubble of blue off to the north, right? That's that storm trough developing. Again, here comes the front as we begin to head into the weekend. And even though the main core, right, of the cooler air goes up through the Midwest, we kind of get this backdoor cold front in. And again, we've got some cooler air, again, building in, right? So we're talking about uh, daytime highs uh, down in the 60s heading into the weekend. Um, so compared to being in the 90s, uh, where we're going to be for part of this week, and in fact, each and every day over the next two or three days, very close to 90, um, I mean, we're going to have kind of a, a, another taste of very late winter or early spring uh, in the area. And enjoy it because that, as we all know, uh, we get closer to, to May. That may be the very last one. After that, again, you can see. We've got some very warm temperatures uh, beginning to build back in. 850 millibar, this is not surface temperatures, just off the surface, but it shows that air mass movement. And again, looking out across the west, again, you can see definitely a heat bubble developing out there, a bit of a ridging pattern. All the chilly air, the cooler air this time of year, not really chilly. But again, take a look how that's really beginning to retreat back into Canada by day 10, right? So we get that little taste of some cooler weather coming down, especially up across parts of the Midwest. And then it retreats, and then we've got quite a bit warmer and milder weather building in. And that may be the theme, again, as we begin to um, head, into, um, head into May. Okay, let's do this uh, quickly. Let's also go and look at our 
uh, opportunity of rain and storms. This is, first of all, I'm going to show you the future radar product. This is going to be short term, right? This is what we call the high resolution rapid refresh model, the HER. Some people call it the HRRR. And this will just walk you through this evening, okay? And this is what the computer thinks the radar is going to look like. Okay, number one, there we go. See the dry line develop. I get a couple supercells develop out there. But then as that activity pushes to the east, I mean, do you see that? I mean, it really dries up. We're still getting some signals, like right there, that, I mean, you're seeing green going to yellow. The computer's giving us some signals that, hey, something may be decaying one of those supercells, or maybe one or two or three of those decaying supercells that are more than likely no longer even remotely severe, that there may be some rain, maybe a little bit of thunder trying to move in. Um, and again, that right there is going to be by about 8 to 9 p.m. this evening. But on the flip side of things, we just looked at the cap, and I mean, that's a very significant cap. It may be that that activity dries up before it even moves in, okay? So this evening, tonight, I've still got a 40% rain opportunity in, but it's not, it, this is definitely not a lock. I think we'll see storms out to the west, but again, what truly makes it in? I mean, I don't, I don't even necessarily know if what we're seeing here on the modeling is truly going to be correct. The modeling is weakening it, but it's still giving us at least some signal that something tries to make it in. Okay, so if you're making evening plans, keep that in mind, and then basically we're done, right? Might be a shower tomorrow morning, but otherwise we're basically done until Thursday. Speaking of that, when I say done, done with precipitation, uh, speaking to that, let me go and walk you through, um, again, the opportunity of precipitation going forward. On the flip side of things, this is not future radar. Uh, to take you all the way out through the next 10 days or so, again, this will be a global model, and this is just giving us precipitation signals, right? Not a pretty future radar. So where you just kind of see areas of green within a six-hour snapshot, there may be an opportunity of precipitation. Obviously, the darker green, kind of the better signal that there may be some precipitation, okay? Uh, but there's no yellows, there's no reds, so you just kind of have to analyze the environment. Are we talking about thunderstorms? Are we talking about something heavier, okay? So a bit of a different product here. Um, but let me go and kind of fast forward, right? We know about the rain and storm opportunity this evening. Then we're basically dry all the way through Thursday. So let me go and get you to Thursday. And this is it right here. So remember where the Storm Prediction Center basically only brought that little risk down to the Red River Valley? The way it looks now, there's going to be an opportunity of some rain and storms, I think, all the way down into parts of central Texas. So I would assume they're going to try and expand that risk even a little bit further down to the south. Uh, this doesn't look to be a high-end probability. Right now, I've got it at about a 30% chance. But again, from the 35 corridor off to the east, late on Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, again, it appears as though storms go up. Conditions would be favorable, again, for some severe weather, depending on how that plays out, okay? So that's going to be our next opportunity. And then you can see on Friday, we still get a few weak signals here. Again, I've got it at about a 20% shot. Could we, say, could we see a stray storm or two around? Not impossible. If we did, even on Friday, there could be some limited severe weather. And then we chilled the temperatures down and look at this. We've got that front coming in. And with the front coming in on Saturday, no risk of severe weather, probably not even much in the way of any thunder. Again, we're talking about dropping temperatures and we're talking about rain. You're obviously seeing the darker green. That would be an opportunity even of some heavier rain. Okay, then we clear that out. And then by the middle of the following week, right, so we're already past this upcoming weekend, talking about net, not even this Wednesday, next Wednesday, there may be an opportunity you can see of another storm system in the area. Pretty good signals now, but again, keep in mind when you're looking out nine to 10 days, that's going to continue to flip-flop. So right now, I've only got a 20% shot on that. You start looking out nine, 10, 11, 12 days, you never want to throw in a 40, 50% shot because again, tomorrow, that's going to look completely different, right? So you just kind of give that little placeholder, hey, there could be some rain, there could be some storms, but it's a long ways out. But it is April, and more than likely, something in that time frame uh, will materialize. Um, one last thing I want to look at, if we have it queued up here on our list, I want to look at rainfall total projections. Um, this right here, and I'm just going to run through this quickly. And this will take you out 10 days. Let's just look at the totals. This is the latest run from the Euro. And, you know, in 10 days, right, most of this being the Saturday deal, right? Uh, again, there's still some signals next week that there could be something around, okay? But most of this being from Saturday, uh, I mean, we're getting one, two, and even three-inch estimates here, right? So I think Saturday 
without the threat of severe weather, with even out the threat of much thunder, I think it's going to be a good old-fashioned soaker, right? If this plays out the way it looks, and the data has been pretty consistent. I've really even bumped up my rain probability now. Uh, I think it's going to be a good old-fashioned soaker. If you're making weekend plans, something going on on Saturday, you may not like it, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, not going to be bad, okay? Especially in April when we can get rain without the, uh, the main threat of severe weather. Um, one more thing to look at. Um, let me back this up one. And this is the blend of models. These are your highs and lows over the next 10 days. And this is the specific product we like to use here. Uh, truly what I build my 12 day off of. Um, but again, you can see tomorrow 87, Wednesday 88. Here we go, Thursday 91. Look at that. Then as we get into Friday 75, but then look at your temperatures go down. Even though you're still seeing 71 on Saturday, that's going to be like a morning thing, right? I mean, the temperatures that front comes through is going to be dropping. You're going to have rain in progress by, by Saturday, mid, late afternoon. We may even be like in the lower 60s to maybe even, you know, upper 50s across parts of the Metroplex, right? So Saturday looks pretty raw, especially by late day. You can see on Sunday, we only recovered a 66, but then it is April. So look at next week, we quickly recover the temperatures back into the 70s and again, back into the 80s there as well. Okay, so that's where we are, folks. Like I said, I know we had to do kind of an abbreviated one really fast through this, but uh, again, we're tracking this risk of severe weather. And again, we got to get back on our normal channel and keep that updated as well. Otherwise, thanks for joining us here in the weather model discussion. We'll do kind of a, a more normal one. We'll have more time uh, to talk when we do one of these tomorrow. Okay, otherwise, enjoy the rest of your Monday.